If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, as well as follow me and subscribe to me on all my other social media platforms. <laughs>
songs like uh, there was a couple other ones on here. Um, Grawl, which is the penultimate song of the album, but I felt like there was one other one. I'm trying to read my notes to find out what was the other part. Um, maybe that was it. I'm thinking maybe that was it. But I digress. So yeah, on a few tracks, you do get some like really cool death metal triplet chugs that just scream death metal. Kind of like... Maybe a little bit of, like, Decapitated, maybe even a little bit of Gojira. Because there's even a lot of Gojira in influence on this album here and there, too. Like, in Grawl, you even get, like, this cool riff and rhythm section that immediately made me think of classic Gojira. Like, From Mars to Sirius, Way of All Flesh, Le Font Sauvage, like, those, the golden era, in my opinion, of Gojira was those three albums. But then, after Equius starts off, you do get into a two-part song, Misri Misericord 1, As the Flesh Falls, and Misericord 2, Anatomy of... of uh, I'm going to have a tough time trying to pronounce this. I was pronouncing it right earlier, now I forgot. I'm going to try... Quiescence? I think I got it. Quiescence, I think I got it. So yeah, both songs are very different, although they're separate songs... Honestly, you could have mashed them together and created a near 17-minute epic. Because Misericord 1, As the Flesh Falls, immediately begins with like big growls and even some riffs that remind me a lot of latter-era death mixed in with a little bit of Obscura, which I can hear a little bit of Obscura influence at times, but here, this is closer to like... Um, symbolic and Sound of Perseverance era death a little bit. Um, and I like how even in Misericord 1, there's like this cool bass and violin section that made me think, am I in the Old West all of a sudden? Which was kind of weird, but I really liked it. And even a guitar solo that pops up on here made me think this is something I could have seen Chuck Schuldiner do. Um... There's even like a cool driving riff that brings us into a cool breakdown with even some black metal tremolo riffs kind of hidden in the background. And it even gets a little bit jazzy at times on this track and then it just turns into just epicness towards the end which leads us directly into Misericord 2 Anatomy of Quiescence. Um... And this track is largely about atmosphere. Like, it's the longer of the two tracks, but I like how it's mostly about setting a mood of hope, as if someone's conquering their inner demons to move on to a better life. And I like how... And I love how the instruments gradually build up as it goes along. And there's even a cool hard rock-inspired lead, but it has moments that remind me of... John Petrucci from Dream Theater, David Gilmore from Pink Floyd, and even a little Alex Skolnick influence from Testament. And I like how there's like this long... It rides on this one open string guitar line for a while, but I like how the violin's kind of taken over the narrative and showcasing flair along with the bass and the drums coming along too. Then we get to Suspire, which is a much more suspenseful and even a little bit more of a sinister track. Like, it's pretty fucking heavy all throughout, but it starts off with a clean guitar line, which was not something you heard on the rest of the album, but it almost felt like as if a kingdom's getting ready for battle. And a lot of the riffs and the rhythms on this track in particular, some people may call me nuts, but context is key, Reminds me a lot of Sun Eater era Job for a Cowboy, which I can't believe that album's nine years old and we haven't had anything since. But I digress further. Even some like classical guitars show up here and there, and even some atonal riffs, which I would immediately think of these atonal riffs like, were they listening to a little bit of fellow continent men ulcerate a little bit, even though they're from New Zealand, but very close. I wondered, were they listening to a little bit of Ulcerate when coming up with some of these atonal lines? Maybe, maybe not. More brutal and vicious death metal grooves come in here. And I love how the leads on this track 
trade off between the violin and the guitars. And even that ending to this song just felt like the whole empire just crumbled to the ground. Then we get to Grawl, which awesome riff work right out of the gate. Almost felt a little bit, at times, thrashy, but also a little bit of melodic death metal. Almost like um, soil work, maybe even a little bit of at the gates at times. But then you get more of those Opeth-inspired grooves and riffs that come along, but trade off with some of those more mellow death sections. Even some cool pinch harmonics going on with the guitar leads on here. Another amazing triplet chug. And I love how the mood shifts towards the end where it feels like you've won the final battle against an evil villain and saving Earth from ultimate destruction. And then to the final track, which was the shortest track of the album at three and a half minutes. Um, I'm going to try to pronounce this. And Hedana. I think Hedadania, I believe that's what it is. It's largely instrumental, it's mostly piano and violin, but with some like wailing clean vocals. Almost feels like a movie credit song. Not that it's a bad thing, it fits with the narrative of this album, I would say. But yeah, like every song I felt delivered and then some. The production of this album, done by Mark Lewis, who has done... A multitude of bands that I can't even mention all of them but some of the choice cuts Trivium, Deicide, Job for a Cowboy, Monstrosity basically like Florida metal as a whole even though this band's from Australia but I loved the production and overall the mix was pretty even kiltered like the bass most importantly of all the bass was prominent and it was flying like the bass work of this album was just flying throughout there were times on certain songs where the mix would change in the middle of sections to like enhance either the violin leads, the guitar leads, or even like signature bass lines or drum fills. Like they would give those instruments a little bit of shine on certain sections and then they'll be back to being even for the majority of the song. I love the riff work and the riff structure of this album as it just basically goes anywhere from Mellow death to proggy atonal guitars, death metal triplet chugs, just capturing everything a prog death metal band should go for. Drum work is just absolutely wild, and I love how the violin is mostly there to provide atmosphere, to enhance certain parts on these tracks. And then, of course, the lead work. Like, the lead work on here was mostly about showcasing emotion, feeling, and atmosphere. Not so much about shred. There are shred moments, but the leads do a great job at providing, like I said, just emotional weight and atmosphere. And then the vocals, both the cleans and the growls were exceptional. Like, both of the vocalists really showcasing their skills on this album. So overall... I really have nothing to complain about this, and shame on me for not checking out this band sooner. Like, these guys have been going f now, putting out studio albums for over a decade, and it, I feel ashamed that this is the first one I started with, when, honestly, this album has made me a fan of this band, and I definitely will check out the other three albums at some point. Enslaved and Hellripper just got another, uh perfect 10. I This is a 10 out of 10 for me. Like, I just cannot find anything to complain about this album. This, by far, next to Enslaved, perhaps the prog metal album of 2023 thus far. We still got a whole 8 or 9 months left before I can really say that, but for now, it's neck and neck between this and Enslaved for the best prog metal album of the year in two different schools of thought, Enslaved on the black metal side, Nea Bliviscaris on the death metal side, but this is brilliant, brilliant stuff. Like, I just, I can't even put it to words. So, yeah, I'm just going to say 10 out of 10 for x Hole by Nea Bliviscaris. But, of course, that's just my opinion. What did you guys think of x Hole by Nea Bliviscaris? Let me know in the comments section below, and until next time, you people keep your horns high, and your dreams wet.